I'm standing here in front of uh, Longmont's hydroelectric plant. Uh, built back in 1911 to 1912. Uh, it's one of the six sites that I'm responsible for, including the five electric substations in the city of Longmont itself. At the time the plant was constructed, this area was considered to be pretty remote, so when an operator moved up here, it kind of felt like they were isolated from the town itself and from the rest of the community, but it was them and their families up here living on site to operate the plant. There were three plant operators that lived on the property here. There was a supervisor and two operators that lived on site in houses that were built by the city of Longmont. Their families also lived with them on site. From the stories back in the day, it sounds like there was a lot of pride in the property, a lot of pride in the landscaping. Inside the plant, there's two basic areas. There's a general office or operator's area that's closed off from the rest of the plant and that was to provide some comfort and uh, noise isolation for the operators. Inside the plant itself, uh, both turbines and generators, there's two electrical generators and two turbines. I'm standing here inside of Longmont's hydroelectric plant next to the Pelton turbine, one of two turbines that we use to generate electricity inside this plant. We want to take that high pressure, high flow water source and turn that into a mechanical energy, which we have with the turbine here. It's no different than a water wheel or spraying a garden hose on your bike tire. When you spray that water source at an object, it's gonna to wanna to make it move, or in this case, turn as a turbine does. That rotational energy is then transferred over to the shaft of the electrical generator here, and we spin that shaft at the right speed to be able to put the right voltage and frequency out so we can match that to our existing distribution grid and push that power back to the residents of Longmont. This plant here makes 500 kilowatts combined between the two generators and turbines. Uh, in 1912, that was all the power that the city needed at the time. Today, that provides about half a percent of what the residents of Longmont use on a daily basis. Our water source for the plant, and essentially our power for the plant, comes from Button Rock Reservoir, which is about eight miles west of where the plant's located. The water leaves Button Rock Reservoir, travels down a stream for a while, ends up at our diversion point where we have a small dam. That small dam is where we start a pipeline or a conduit. It's non-pressurized, free-flowing pipeline that flows another four miles to what we call the water box and the beginning of the penstock. The penstock is the start of the pressurized pipeline. That's where the actual pressure and power is starting to be harnessed so we can make that high pressure water source turn this turbine. After the water does its work inside the turbines, it travels down to the raceway below the turbine out to a steel pipeline. That pipeline carries that water down to what we call the North Pond. And that North Pond is the beginning of the domestic water system where the water department for the city takes over and will actually treat that water to be used at your tap at your house in Longmont. So the way we take that water source and put it through the turbine as it ends up at this final valve here, which is called a needle valve. You can see that it has a valve that slides in and out. That's how we control the flow of the water into the turbine and therefore the speed or the power output of that turbine. This is more of a complete assembly with the actual valve shaft as part of the needle valve so you can see how we can control this with a hand wheel or other operating device to change the position of that needle in or out of the valve seat and control the flow to the turbine. Uh, once it makes its way past the needle valve assembly itself, that flow actually gets directed towards what we call a paddle or a turbine blade. So that water actually hits this paddle wheel here. There's roughly 20 or so arranged in two rows on this turbine shaft that make this turbine spin. We still have the original pressure gauges, kind of the old steam brass gauge that uh, indicates the pressure for the plant. We still use that when we come up here to make checks on the plant that's since been converted to an electronic pressure transducer that we use to control those needle valves automatically now. The hoist was put here. We do maintenance on the turbine occasionally. We'll pull this lid off the turbine and we'll actually get in there and inspect the paddle wheels, make replacements or adjustments if necessary. This photograph was taken in the 1960s sometime with the maintenance crew and operation crew that operated the plant back in that day. At this last maintenance opportunity we had, we decided we wanted to recreate that same photo roughly a hundred years 
after this plant had first been put online. As part of the technological improvements we've made at the plant, we also have security cameras or security system here. Uh, originally installed just to make sure that nobody is poking around when they shouldn't be or we can keep track of maintenance up here. Uh, what we've come to find is that we get more animals than people on this system. So we've seen bears, uh, mother and cub. We've seen a mother and son uh, mountain lion pair. And of course, uh, many deer running through the property as well. I'm proud to be standing here in front of these turbines that were generating power over 100 years ago and still continue to do so in the same manner today to provide power to the citizens of Longmont.